Topic number one, Chris. Virginia's coaching search. Uh, it looked like it was going to be Anthony Poindexter, who is on staff at Penn State currently. He is a, or sorry, former Penn State guy at Virginia. I cannot remember. My brain is so fried right now. Either way, Anthony Poindexter looked like it was going to be the guy, and then he pulled his name out of the hat. Um, now, it appears that it might be Tony Elliott, but he is deciding between Duke and Virginia. Now, he is Clemson's offensive coordinator. We don't know exactly what's going on with that. He has been in the running for mm, half a dozen different jobs over the last two years and has decided not to take many of them that were actually offered to him. Uh, he is very, very patient with his decision-making. Uh, he's a really smart guy, 42 years old. He is the offensive coordinator right now, was the co-offensive coordinator, but he played at Clemson under Tommy Bowden. Um you know, it's it's you, one you, thing. You and I see you and I see Tony Elliott totally different, and you're using the word patient and all these positive things about him. Um, but I'm going to tell you that his star has faded, massively faded, because him choosing between Virginia and Duke is a far cry from the other jobs that have been offered to him and or interviewed to him. Long ago. Now you you were not incorrect about that. He he was up for he was being discussed for the uh, USC job at the beginning of this yes. season, and probably could have gotten it a few years ago if if they had fired. I'm telling you this after last season, if they had fired um, uh, Clay at the end of last season, he might have been the leading candidate. And then yes. this season, the offense was putrid. Now we have talked. You know, not great about the offense for Clemson this season because they did not deserve it, right? They they weren't very good. Um, and honestly, that offense fell off because of Jeff Scott leaving. So it kind of looks like Jeff Scott was the brains behind the operation. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that Tony Elliott won't be a great head coach somewhere. Uh, but he is a he's a pretty smart guy. Um, coached at Furman for a little bit. And... You know, I mean, we'll see what happens here, but if if he does not end up getting the job, Bruce Feldman has reported that next up on the list for Virginia might be Josh Gaddis, who is the offensive coordinator at Michigan. And that one kind of surprised me. Josh Gaddis is 37 years old. Like, I, Yeah, I could, that's, a, that's a quick hire, man. I just I, I don't understand what – like it, so, so Josh Gaddis did win the Broyles Award this year. Uh, for the nation's top assistant coach, uh, and and what he's done with Michigan's offense is awesome. He has certainly deserving modernized it. Yeah, very, very deserving of that. Um, his he's been a coach for eleven years now. Uh, started as a GA at North Carolina, went to Western Michigan as a wide receivers coach, went to Vanderbilt as a wide receivers coach under James Franklin, then went to Penn State under James Franklin, was the passing game coordinator, wide receivers coach, and he's a he he was known for his recruiting. He was at Alabama for one year, didn't get along with the staff there, uh, left for Michigan as an offense coordinator. And I, I can't say it was definitely not a bad move to go to Michigan. Obviously, you see what's going on now. Now, if you told me last season that, I don't know that I would have agreed necessarily. But uh, he's doing a fantastic job. I this, this Virginia coaching situation is strange to me. If Tony Elliott does not take the job, what do you think is going on over there? No, nobody has really said anything about the fact that Bronco just decided to hang it up. Like, doesn't that seem odd? Uh, I think that's extremely odd. I think there are red flags everywhere. Um, I don't know what they are, and I don't know what they mean. Um, but you know, and and let's let's say Bronco didn't just leave. Okay, let's say there's nothing going on there, and you know, whatever. No, let's say he hit the lottery and he said, you know what? I don't want to work anymore. I want to retire. But the job is perfectly fine. Where does Virginia rank as opposed to quality jobs? And and also, like, let's compare it with Duke. Let's compare it to the others. Like, are they any different? Is one better than another? What, what does that say about those jobs? Uh, I'm actually Googling it right now. Um, I, I'm, I'm Googling salary. Uh I just I don't know what. <sighs> Let's see. So he he got four point four five. Nah, okay. His his recent contract extension in twenty nineteen uh, assured him close to four and a half million dollars in twenty twenty four. So four and a half million is 
I mean, that's significantly less than what Ole Miss is paying, right? Uh, it's it's about the same as Wake Forest, what Wake Forest is paying. It's about the same as what NC State is paying. It's I think Virginia's a good job. It's another one of those uh, academic institutions that uh, they set the bar kind of high for their academics, for incoming athletes, right? So it's a, it's a little more difficult to recruit to, but... Like, I don't think any of these guys that they're talking about bringing in, I don't think they're going to pay them any of these monster salaries that uh, that you're seeing across the landscape with, with some of these other big-name guys. I, I mean, it, Virginia's got to be better than Duke, right? You think, but I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know that either. Is the fact that Duke is a private school, does that help them at all? I mean, it would help me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's what Tony Elliott's trying to figure out. Like, uh, you know, if you're trying to get some recruiting stuff done, if you're trying to get, you know, something done behind the scenes, and you don't want the public to be able to FOIA uh, the whole thing, then then maybe. But it just seems odd that that this is even happening at, at Virginia. I just, I thought they had I thought they had hit it with uh, with Bronco. Like he's he's such a well respected coach, uh, a guy that's really kind of proven it. And, you know, he can kind of win anywhere. I don't know that we know that about any of these unproven guys. And it's not that I expected them to go out and get uh, another sitting head coach. Um, but, you know, at Virginia, I thought, you know, maybe maybe you take a shot at like a Jamie Chadwell or something like that. But maybe Jamie Chadwell doesn't really fit the uh, the narrative there at, at Virginia. So it's it's a little strange to me. I have no idea what's actually going to end up happening on this. Um you uh, you want to take a stab at it? You want to take a guess? Oh, I got no clue. No, I don't. I don't, I don't have a clue. Well, Neither this do I. Do, so I. You know. Yeah, it, th- those two are just completely wide open. I got no idea. Uh, let's talk about something that we do. I know. don't. I, I'll say this purposely. I just don't think they're very good jobs. Like there, there yeah. are G five jobs, which you know I hate that phrase. There are G five jobs out there that I think are substantially better than these two jobs. Yeah, yeah I could. I could totally see that. I could totally see that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.